Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerninghearts.com presents St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare and the Progress of the Soul with Dan Burke, who is the founder and president of the Avila Institute for Spiritual Formation. He's also the co-host of the Divine Intimacy radio show with his wife, Stephanie. He is the author and editor of more than 17 books on Catholic spirituality, including Devil in the Castle, the book on which this series is based. St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare and the Progress of the Soul, with Dan Burke. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Now, that's the thing that is so telling about the Fifth Mansion. And, you know, we mentioned um, St. Ignatius of Loyola. Mm -hmm. And for those, you know, especially those who have been on Discerning Hearts and, and have gone to spiritualdirection.com and have Divine Intimacy Radio and, and read your books too, know that in this particular area, this is what has been termed the second week discernment, yes. those eight rules that Ignatius has, because the temptations come in the form of other goods. Yeah. You know, we think that this is going to be a good thing. And, and in actuality, this is the area that we're real testing to really test and to see where the fruits are first. I mean, you have to be able to give it a little bit of patience to see um, where that, uh, you know, as you were just describing it, it just pops in my head and I was wrong, but almost that degree of scrupulosity that and, and desire for the particular type of jelly that none of, you know, nothing else will do. You don't, that, you know, you have to be willing to look at that, aren't you? Yeah. Well, and, and you know, you've, you've done, I think, more than anybody at promoting Father Gallagher's work. I think Father Gallagher is the best uh, Ignatian, uh, the best Jesuit that exists, even though he's not a Jesuit, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and he's done great work on your show. But yeah, he, uh, I strongly recommend folks listen to those uh, shows with Chris. But the second rules are rules that help you when a, a consolation comes that draws you to something good helps you to understand how it lands uh, in, in its subtleties on you. Is it something sharp or is it, you know, how does it begin or is it a drop or, you know, were you, uh, were you thinking about the thing, the idea that came before it came, which means it would be, uh, it had a, pre, a preceding cause, which would make you question it more where, in contrast to, a young man who's tomato gardening and thinking about tomatoes and suddenly he hears I should become a priest that's without a preceding cause and so those sorts of things um uh you might believe a little more but Ignatius is always warning us to test no matter what and then and then so you enter into the thing and so at the beginning it feels okay but at the middle it starts to get a little weird and you're thinking well I thought this was right and that's where humility comes in. I, I've mm -hmm. had uh, several situations in my life where I've used second rules and I've had to back out of a moving train that I got moving because it wasn't God's will and it affected people. And I just had to say, I'm sorry. I mean, this isn't God's will. I just realized that the serpent's tail showed up. The second it showed up, I'm out, you know, and that's a, a, a phrase that Ignatius uses to reveal kind of the hidden work of the enemy, but he's not quite perfectly able to conceal his work. And if you know the signs, then you can uh, then you can avoid the problem. And through chapter five, um, or the fifth mansion, Teresa is, I think uh, it's fair to say, is constantly saying, here's where the serpent's tail is in, is in locutions. Here's where the serpent's tail is in charismatic uh, uh, gifts. Here's where the serpent's tail is, you know, and and it's a very it's a powerful lesson uh, in 
how to discern supernatural phenomena, uh, or, uh, and I don't know if the word is supernatural, but phenomena that seems to be emanating from God and not human in, in origin, at least, is, is probably a better proper way to say it. But I think, as I note in the chapter, she was very much um, probably influenced and helped. Uh, John of the Cross seems to have a more original thinking about these things. It's almost like Teresa got hers from the Jesuits, of course, the Holy Spirit. John of the Cross, the way he thinks isn't in that same framework as, as Ignatius, but John nonetheless comes to similar wisdom just with different descriptions, different kind of emphasis, um, and actually some very specific clarity that isn't even revealed uh, in Ignatius. So, you know, this is the beauty of going across these great traditions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and why we need them all. Well, and then bring in Francis de Sales, who, mm -hmm. you know, was a, a student of Ignatius, essentially of his educators, and then uh, also had a great appreciation and read, even brought Carmelites into France um, and knew Teresa, knew John, and then had to try to help his people all of his parishioners, as it were, those who he's trying to teach, and he incorporated all those things. And ultimately, what he's what he's saying is that it it and Teresa is so strong in this. Your barometer is love. Yes. Your barometer is love. You got humility, but you have at how are you looking at um and how are your engagements? You know, for example, I'll just pull this up. It's you have a tendency because you are you're and again it's not that you're a nasty person but you are looking at others and you find them wanting because they are not the same either experiencing as you're experiencing as you're seeing and that type of judgment i mean we are called it and correct me again dan um we are called to and that's a, it's a commandment from our lord to love our neighbor Okay, yeah. so we we love, but we're also supposed to see the spirit. If if someone is is um, acting in a way that challenges us or causes us to stop, look at the spirit and judge yeah. the spirit. But don't right. don't condemn the person. If you if it prevents you from caring and loving and desiring the good for that person, then you got to take a look at yourself too, because that that's a problem. Yes. Yeah, what, what's your I thoughts? Yeah, St. Paul echoes your point in Corinthians, where he says, we war not against flesh and blood, but against mm -hmm. principalities and powers. So mercy is always something we're looking for, but that doesn't mean we overlook justice, and we does, doesn't mean we look past the problems. You know, abuse should be exposed. However, 99, like, I don't know about you, but, you know, if I just do a quick survey in my mind of all the difficulties that I personally have been involved with, uh, gosh, a tiny fraction have been abuse that I needed to call out, right, in some way. 99% right. of the rest of it is just human frailty playing out. And, and I'm in a moment where I either have the opportunity to judge another's weakness against my strength or against my ideal or to get down on my knees with them as they're broken and weep with them and say, it's okay, and look, you're gonna be fine. Let me pray for you. You know, God is with you. Let's rise together, let's walk together. And I think that's love rather than, oh, aren't you a pitiable creature? It sure be good if you got your life together. Well, right. I, you know, now we're looking a lot like the one Jesus, you know, condemned where the one uh, man said that, I, you know, Lord help me, I'm a sinner, or the proud Pharisee or the publican who's, you thank God I'm not such a loser like these people. Well, you know, the, the latter's gonna probably end up in hell and the former's probably gonna end up in heaven along with prostitutes and sinners. And, you know, I remember um, somebody criticized my, my son, Jordan, my oldest son, he, um, he had a major conversion, uh, had to go to a treatment center, and he's talked about this publicly, pornography. So he starts helping guys to get free of porn, right? And, 
and I don't know what this guy's situation is. I don't know if he had a porn issue or what, but the producer for Milo Yiannopoulos, mm -hmm. but this guy, so this devout Catholic producer who's connected with my son says, you got to have Jordan on your show. Well, Jordan goes on his show and, you know, Milo tries to break him down. He can, he tries to play the normal games with him. He can't. Jordan's bearing witness to Christ and the teachings of the church and all of that. And uh, uh, someone associated with us said, I'm ashamed that he was on the show. And the answer back was, so were the Pharisees when Jesus ate with the prostitutes and sinners. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. how, what is your view of the world? You know, <laughs> man, if you choose the wrong lens, if you choose the devil's lens, let's just put it, let's just be honest. If you choose to take on the spirit of the accuser of the brethren, which is one of the names of the devil in scripture, mm -hmm. gosh, you can reap so much destruction. But if you would just, you know, Anthony, Dr. Lillis taught me this, this idea of implicating your, yourself in the life of another, getting messy with them, being in with their brokenness and being with them is where Christ then comes and heals. But standing off and criticizing is, you know, only appropriate when you're dealing with public teaching that you have to fight, when you're dealing with those kinds of things. But the vast majority of us aren't in that world either. We're, you know, mm -hmm. we're in, you know, the I'm here at the retreat center. The painters who are, I think, probably Baptist, asked me a week or so ago, hey, what, how do you get holy water? Like, how does that happen? So I told them. Today, they said, do you write some kind of book? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah. I, I, how many books do you write? I said, I don't, I don't remember. Would you like one? Yeah, we'd, I'd like a book. Both of them guys, yeah, I'd like a book, you know. But that happened because we had a lot of very cordial conversations of, you know, just treating them with dignity and respect and just paying them when I should pay them and not complain, you know, just being with people in a, just a, like being human in a dignified way. Anyway, I'm getting way off track here, but your point was, and it's Teresa of Avila's point, the measure of your spiritual maturity is your love, not your flamethrowing capacity, not your critical criticizing capacity. Now it's love, which yes, involves truth, but never outside of the context of gentleness and a, a sensitivity to the reality that the other person is made for it, just like you, by a creator that loves them and brought them into existence for an eternal relationship of love. And boy, how dare us when we don't wash their feet like Jesus did and said we stand off and criticize. We'll return to St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare and the Progress of the Soul with Dan Burke in just a moment. This is Chris McGregor of Discerning Hearts, a nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation through the use of new media. Discerning Hearts creates engaging multimedia specializing in audio and video productions which are faithful to the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church and its rich, authentic spiritual tradition. Its mission responds to the Church's call to use the media for evangelization, catechesis, and spiritual renewal. We have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truth shared through Discerning Hearts totally free to users throughout the world. Besides our website, DiscerningHearts.com, Discerning Hearts has a newly updated free app where users can find all their favorite Discerning Hearts programming, including Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more. There, too, you'll find numerous beautifully produced devotionals and novenas, including the Holy Rosary and Stations of the Cross, to help users create a sacred time for prayer wherever they may be. Discerning Hearts programming can be found on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and so many more. Discerning Hearts also has an ever-growing YouTube channel. Discerning Hearts online spiritual retreats and seminars have helped souls in North and South America, Europe, Africa, Australia, the Middle East, and the Philippines. 
For many people all around the world, Discerning Hearts is a daily source of inspiration, spiritual nourishment, and encouragement. We can only do this thanks to the generous financial support of our friends and benefactors. Please consider donating to our mission today. The world is looking for answers, for spiritual guidance and authentic discernment, for relationship and community. Your support is very much needed and appreciated. Please keep our mission in your prayers and tell a friend about Discerning Hearts. We now return to St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare and the Progress of the Soul with Dan Burke. It's hard, just like you said. It's, you know, the, the love that we're called to, of, it, it's, um, it's an act of your will. Gaze upon the crucifix. I doubt that Jesus was feeling the warm fuzzies at that moment. I mm-hmm. sincerely doubt that the Blessed Virgin at the foot of the cross, and I'm not trying to be cute. I mean, it, a lot of times we think that we're supposed to have these warm, good feelings. I doubt the Blessed Virgin felt real warm and good in that moment to the extent that it it, it hurts sometimes. Love hurts sometimes. And yet we are called to enter into that and in what Teresa I, I think in a very real way you'll know that 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 a sign that testing is because you're willing to enter into that for yeah. the sake of another and if your prayer isn't leading you into that I, I don't know last time I checked attraction and culminate were still sins you right. know right. and we got to be careful I mean that, that's the challenge right it is. It is. Yeah, and it I'm is. the worst. Don't get, I mean, don't get me wrong, Dan. I mean, I'm, and I'm not calling on anybody. I have to call myself out all the time because I love to give my opinion on things. Surprise, surprise. Well, but you and me that, both. Oh, well, I used you to know. be in news, you know, I was the president of EWTN News and I, I found it very challenging every day, disturbing actually often. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to choose, for instance, between millions of clicks or to preserve the dignity of Father Karapi long enough to where we were mm-hmm. talking to his superiors because and we were praying as a team like nobody was arguing that we expose what we knew in mm-hmm. the National Catholic Rich. Nobody was. There's such right. a good and all, all those people are still there by the way. Nobody was. Everybody was what did the superior say? Is he going to come back? Is he going to repent? You know everyone was praying and desiring his his reconciliation and his his you know his help that's how we should be it's like rooting for people but you know the other side that's hard you and i are in the business of communicating truth right and and so that means we're in the business of going ah that guy's not coming to discerning hearts you know or that guy's not going to end up on 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 a spiritual direction.com and you know, there are times when people say, hey, have you read this great book? And, and then I get enough of it. And I have to go, OK, this has got too much influence. And I and I always, almost always preface with, you know, we have 3000 articles, seven are about this. Can I really trust this author or whatever? Hate doing it, yeah. you know, but it's, yeah. you only do it when there's a lot of public damage happening and uh, you you have a public position it's best if you call the person or try to deal with them. And and I actually have had that happen. Well, and here's another Teresa thing. And I learned this from her. Okay. And I mean, we've talked about this, about how um, for, for me as a Benedictine oblate, I look at the rule and, and put that in the context of all the great Benedictine teachers, you know, and, but Teresa is probably my number one, believe it or not, in the, to the extent that when I first really, both my husband and I, when we really had our reversion long ago, when I was very young, young, er, um, but uh, she helped me to be able to see things clearly, especially through this fifth mansion. Yeah. And because I was watching just some spiritual leaders in this area who were very, um, uh, we had a community here and I, I, I stated because and it's still tender for a lot of people, but intercessors of the lamb. 
Oh, yeah. And um, I watched that over in Mother Nadine Brown. I knew her back when she was Sister Nadine with the Good Shepherds wow. all the way through and watched how that all happened and how those figures can be lifted up so high. And as, as you know, exorcists that we have uh, both known will say, the devil's got all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you want something hard enough, you want it bad enough, he'll give it to you, Words. you know? So that the thing is, but what Teresa teaches us, and not only in that, that great love for others and in that humility, is that you have to be able to, to know yourself and to also let, let these things go, you know, and, and, and in that great testing, um, and it's in the little things, it's in how you love and, and how the virtues are played out. The devil doesn't, he doesn't want virtue. Oh, oh, he doesn't even want to be near it, any of them. And that's how we can see it in our own lives. Can't we, Dan? I mean, to be able, um, how we express that and how we love each other, even when, even when it's hard. Yeah. And I think the measure really, and this is a hard one, right? For us, uh, uh, I can be kind of serious at times. And I can be, I do feel the weight of the suffering of the church. I, my heart aches, you know, for vocations and for the vocation crisis we have and for priestly formation crisis we have. And, you know, but Jesus is Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I can't remember if I've shared this on one of the shows, but I was in an exorcism with an with a, with a amazing priest. And he was really getting beat up. Uh, it was quite, I'd never experienced it quite as severe uh, before, like seeing a priest suffer so seriously. And at one point, he's kind of hunched over and he turns to me and he smiles and he says, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like, like yep. I'm not letting this thing extract the love of God from me or, or you know, which is why James 1 says, count it out all joy my brother, when you encounter various trials or Peter admonishes is like, hey, you know, this momentary light affliction or, or Paul admonishes, you know, consider not the sufferings of this present time worthy to be compared to the glory that is revealed to us. I think love for God and others is reflected in joy. And, and joy comes because we know he's in control. And we know, and, and joy leaves when we try to grasp and fix and force and, and hold on to and, and, and justice and remedy and, you know, instead of just finding the pace that Jesus is walking near us, matching his pace behind him and in his time. Uh, and then when he says, hey, could you go do this? You go, yeah, rather than running out ahead of him, which I have done and had to go to confession for even recently. Um, and, you know, trying to do things under my own power and strength. And Teresa is constantly calling us back to, um, uh, I think, a gentler reality, um, um, a less complex one wherein we're fully trusting him, fully loving him. And then that causes this radiant joy that causes uh, uh, that we're changed and the world changes around us because the, because the world is hungry for something more than what the world offers, which isn't much, you know? Um, yeah. Well, and I'm so glad you said that. And, and, and as I was saying, you know, as far as her being a teacher to me, she gave me one of the toughest teachings I've ever had to learn. And I didn't like it. And I still, to this day, you know, I thank her for it, but I also struggle with it when she says, um, just let go when somebody says something nice about you and listen when they criticize. <laughs> right. You know, because there is something, and now if you're firm in your relationship with God, you're, you're, you know, who you are in him, through him, with him, in him, mm -hmm. then, okay, because there's probably, as she says, there's probably a little bit of truth in what 
there might be. I'm not saying there always is. And I don't want people to feel like they got to do unjust criticism. But she's like, don't be afraid of it. You know, take a look at it and, and okay. And see if there's something that God is trying to teach you in this. And um, I think that, you know, and that's part of the fruitfulness is in another fifth man. I, it, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not saying I'm in the fifth mansion, but no, no. I'm just, that's part of it, isn't it? It, it is. And it, that produces what? It produces humility because we know the human person has an infinite capacity for self-delusion and, and a rather very little capacity for accurate self-understanding. We need the voices from the outside. We need to lean in when they criticize for two reasons. One, likely we deserve it. <laughs> You know, in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of things, in terms of our sinfulness and the people we've hurt and, you know, God himself we've hurt and our sins, you know, generally I always think, ah, oh, yeah, I deserve that. It's Maybe it's not true, but let's look and see. Yeah. And then lean in and say, okay, is that, is that true? And, and, or is there a piece of it that's true? Because sometimes we can pull out our lawyer thing and go, well, since, you know, subparticle A number 32 is not accurate, therefore, obviously, they don't have the spirit, and I don't have to listen to them, you know? Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah. That was my 40s, yeah. That's, I did that all the time to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, you know, it's in its, its religious life, too, and, and I think part of what I said in that chapter that I think uh, is, 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 not spoken of so much by her in terms of a teaching because she lived it, but community life uh, is so powerful. And we can live that, of course. You know, you're in a Benedictine community. I'm in Apostoli VA. There's plenty of other good communities out there, Franciscans and Carmelites and, and, the, and Dominicans. And we need closeness with other people on a common journey so that they can speak in our lives. I am not on Facebook and haven't been for more than two years now. More, two years, anyway, it's been a long time because I was acting contrary to the values I teach constantly and two members of the community would not let me forget it. And, and one in, in an incredibly painful and inappropriate way, I will say, um, said the most harsh things anyone has ever said to me the other much more charitable, but uh, one uh, just lambasted me and left the community. Mm. And, and, but it came back like a year later. And, uh, and I just loved the guy. He didn't do it right, but at least he had the guts to do it, you know? And then the other one is, I love him, you know, more, if you can say this word, because he, he would just, gently say, Dan, here's what you're teaching me. And you're not doing it. <laughs> you just did this to this person. You said this. And it's not helpful. And it's bad witness and blah, 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 you know. So I'll, I'll give him public props. His name is John Kennedy, the guy who did it the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in Japan. And uh, uh, such a good human being to to call me out and I so what I figured out was I actually didn't have the maturity to be on the um, on that platform and I had to go I had to get off I told my family you know keep posting for me but don't give me the password you know? <laughs> so, it's been great well, for me. <laughs> but that's you know that's the beauty that's the fruitfulness yeah. And that's, you know, and praise God that, I mean, that's the kind of, um, you know, just being open and may God, you know, may I be blessed in having those John Kennedys in yes. my life. We've got to value them because they're more important than the people who say, oh, Chris, oh, Dan, you're so wonderful. What you do is changing my life. It's like, yes, thank you. Thank God. I'm so happy that that's mm -hmm. helping you. But the one who says, you know, Chris, you couldn't, you know, you said this, it's not quite right. You know, <laughs> we actually need to do. And in fact, uh, I think it's John of the Cross uh, said, you, you actually need to draw near to those people. Mm -hmm. And, and wow, is that hard? Wow. Is that it hard? is because I mean, it, we're, we're dealing with, they, it, it pricks our, our identities, mm -hmm. who we think we are. 
mm -hmm. and, and what we think we know mm -hmm. and how firm we are. And, um, but that's okay. You know, a thousand little pinpricks. I mean, <laughs> and as long as we get to heaven. <laughs> that's right. And you no know, purgatory. Those are my two. I don't want purgatory. I just want to get straight in. So give me all the suffering now, please. Well, and dear God, I mean, especially in Catholic media, Christian media, period. Anybody who is a self-proclaimed Christian or has been recognized who is out there, but it was particularly for the Catholic out there for in media, uh, woe to us, uh, especially with, with, when we talk about millstones. Yes. And we take people with us in our... Uh, in, in whatever that might be, you're right. You can't have certain voices. You may just love somebody to death, but man, I can't, I can't put that snark on there. You can't right. get snarky. You can't, oh, you can't be uh, diving into that sea because you take a whole, your wake takes so many other people under, you know, you yeah, gotta be so careful, right? Yeah. The more influence you have. Yeah. The more well, James, back to James 1, let not many of you be teachers, lest you occur a stricter judgment. So, yeah. yikes. You know. yeah. That's why I'm glad you're in charge. Oh, um, no, I'm, I'm just learning from you. you you're know, a teacher. You're in charge of your world. I'm in charge of mine. We better be holy, right? Right. Well, amen. Actually, he's in charge. I know you mean that too. Right, or right. Stephanie and Bruce are. I don't know. Right. Yeah, charge. right. Right, right. But um, Dan, I, I wish we had more time for the fifth mansion. Any final thoughts for this part of our conversation? I think, uh, you know, this has been good. I, you know, listeners might wonder, are we talking about the book? And actually, mm -hmm. uh, Chris just has a very good way of weaving right. through the ideas. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of very powerful uh, wisdom in, in, in the fifth mansion that apply across all of the other mansions and some that are just unique, but um, I'm just grateful that God doesn't leave us in the wilderness without guides. And he always does, there's always an answer. I mean, just finish with this. He never leaves us without what we need to take the next right step toward heaven. And so thanks for allowing me to be on with you and talk about that. Oh, the blessing is for us your presence. I'm just so glad. And yes, folks, uh, may God allow us the opportunity to be with Dan again, to talk about the, well, the famous six mansion, there the one go. that has so many different things, no, at so many different levels. I can't wait to talk to you about it, Dan. Awesome. Well, I'll look forward to it too. You've been watching St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare and the Progress of the Soul with Dan Burke. To view other episodes of this program, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, view the playlist list below, or you can find them at discerninghearts.com or within the free Discerning Hearts app. There, too, you can download the podcast versions of these conversations. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to offer authentic and rock-solid spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for St. Teresa of Avila, Spiritual Warfare, and the Progress of the Soul with Dan Burke.